Okay, so we're playing a nice long game here. It's a 60 minute, 10 second game just to get some practice. Do, 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 do. Let's see. So we're going to go basic, keep it nice and simple, straightforward. Yeah, just develop the bishop. What have they got? I'm going to bring the bishop back, supporting the knight. Are they really going to go for the bit knight and the bishop for the rook? We shall see. Not too sure. We'll see if they want to make the decision. Um, seems like a waste of a move there. Let's just um, see if we can take advantage of them losing that tempo. develop the bishop so I've moved fairly quickly to this point because this is a, a comfortable zone and we can use the rest of the time to figure out where we want to go how we want to place our pieces based on what the opponent does from this point so they're doing a lot of back maneuvers doesn't look too threatening I'm actually just going to sink the knight in here. Don't want to do too much dancing of keeping the tension. Always seem to lose out when I do that, so let's try and get rid. This knight's probably coming here to attack the pawn, yes. So just bring this pawn up to support. Trying to avoid getting split pawns because if our bishop takes and it splits his pawns. Where else is the. No, comfortable at this moment, just nice and steady. <clears throat> That's the target zone. Potentially just trying to split this pawn up by capturing the bishop here. But he may just bring this pawn down to support or just move the bishop back so that it's actually getting taken by this pawn opening up the rook so that's probably the maybe the better move for them I can't think for them um, that's what I don't want them to do I don't want them to do that I would rather take the bishop here so that then they split the pawns up here Okay, so he's done none of those, so we can just go for the splitting of the pawn situation. He's blocked his knight a little bit as well, I think. So his knight goes there, he gets taken. If he takes the pawn, he gets taken. If he comes down here, he gets taken. If he goes there, he gets taken. Am I missing something? If he takes there, he gets taken. He can't go back there because he's blocked himself. So it looks like the opponent has done damage to themselves. But it's not saying we're winning, it's just um, an observation that his knight is probably going to struggle. So, does he have a fight back position, you know, whereby he puts a piece on mine to give me something to think about? You know, such as like pushing down here, but it's still not making space for his knight. So if he did push, we could still take. His knight is still trapped. His knight is still trapped and he's moving anyway. He's trying to get an advantage by having the bishop onto the knight somehow. Um, okay, so we have the box clever here. Don't need to rush. It is 60 minutes and 10 seconds. I'm looking to try and develop. Rook opposite the king, queen. I do like those types of maneuvers. If his bishop takes, our bishop can take. 
I'm going to bring the rook opposite the queen. You know, it seems a long way off, but sometimes things can happen real quick. So he's bringing his rook opposite our queen. So I'm going to bring my queen here because we've talked about that process of having the rook opposite the queen. And like I said, things can happen very quickly. So he does take, so we can capture his bishop's going to be on our queen. When the bishop captures, or, or the queen takes and he wants to do the queen exchange. No, he doesn't want to do that. Queen can come here, so they're fighting back. We've got a nice diagonal here, just don't want to lose sight of those types of things. Knight can go there, but the queen is blocking at the minute. So we're looking towards the king Gary, looking to see whether or not we can put pressure around the king at the moment we're not going to force it because it looks like the opponent is looking to get establish a good presence in the center of the board and they're not happy being a piece down so they're going to want to try and either get that piece back or get a favorable position our simplified version is just bringing the rook here to face their rook because we can't afford to look to trade down here but i want to trade down it with a good position on the board so we've got here fairly quickly really you know for a 60 minute 10 second game but this is where that time can be chewed up and eaten up now because it's at the cru crucial stages especially for the opponent at this moment how do they gain that piece back or gain a solid position out of the current situation going for a nice simple pawn push that's almost like a waiting move now he's waiting to find out what I'm actually going to do we do have options as well Queen coming here looking for the exchange which might be quite nice actually got the rook or well, we've got the Queen could bring the Knight there but that you know it uh, do, 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 do. doesn't have to exchange though and because he's got less pieces on the board, it probably won't. So where's this queen going to go from that point on if we went here? He could come here. He can go there. He can go here, but then he doubles his pawns. And he's not necessarily going to go down there. So he's only really got two places to go. Or he could always go back as well. Not many options. So if we did do that, does his rook have any play down the bottom? I'm actually going to go and see if we can do the queen exchange. It's like we said, we, we can trade down now because we've got more pieces. I suppose in a way it makes it harder. You know when you're um, getting rid of things like the queens, it makes it harder for you to develop going through. And that's probably why they say don't exchange the queens, keep the queens on the board. But if you keep the queens on the board, the opponent has a queen as well. And it's a fairly strong piece. And that can help formulate solid attacks against you. So... I'd rather have a weaker attack coming against me with, more, with me having more pieces on the board so that gives me still the advantage rather than ha still having his strong queen on the board which can sort of sneak in and grab pieces and reduce down our pieces so like I say he's got those all here looking to exchange on his terms trying to open up this palm What do we do there? Obviously we could come here with the rook. So it could get quite funky really with them. Um, if he's keeping the tension, moves there, then he brings his rook attacking our queen. Our rook takes his queen, obviously then his rook take, but then he would get a back rank checkmate. So that wouldn't work for them. But they're taking that long. I don't think they are actually going, oh, he's not exchanging. So. I'm going to stick with what I had originally said, but I have of this mindset of 
doing this but I don't know if it's going to work if I went here no because then his queen takes knight takes and his rook isn't forced to take because we then would have that back ramp checkmate thing that I was talking about so I'm going to take the queen off the board I'm going to be true to what I said which is basically he can double his put rooks there so let's just be mindful of that so bishop is controlling this there so if we go here his rook is coming across here we can develop the knight attacking the rook rook is going to take we take and then his rook takes and then the bishop takes that's potentially what could happen so our knight would be here his bishop's protecting the square so we'd have the bishop and the knight against his bishop so it's getting a little bit more before we do that is there something else yeah, there. I'm just thinking of a back rank checkmate situation but I don't think there is knight attacking the bishop hmm let's just go with the simple keep it simple I did try and see if there was some sort of magical thing because of the back rank checkmate situation maybe there was I just didn't see it and you can't fault, for, fault me for not trying because I did actually try so let's see in these situations it's about move order as well and what I was doing while I was looking through that was if they have any tricks to win a tempo on me as well because like the bishop taking here if I took here and then his rook takes then our rook takes can his rook come here put pressure on could put pressure on this pawn because our king would need to be here to support the rook to come up there so a little tiny tempo wins like that that the opponent can potentially glean from this, posi um, this position so he's actually going for it could take with the bishop, take with the rook, take with the rook see if we take with the bishop then if his bishop wanted to take the knight then our rook would take his rook for free but I'm very mindful that the rook can come here and come there like we mentioned the king isn't here supporting our rook but on the other side of the coin if we take with the rook then he takes with the bishop <coughs> yeah, I suppose we can still do this which is best take with the rook his bishop can still he can come here then we go here attacking the bishop again I don't think it makes a difference does it okay I'm gonna take with the rook because the rook can pressure a back rank checkmate so it's threatening a back rank checkmate situation so he's gonna to have to lose a, lose a move by going back with his rook to support which potentially allows our knight to come away have to be careful of that one though because his rook can then come across and then he's pinning our knight to the rook so I probably won't do that probably go this way attacking the bishop could be a little bit stuck in no man's land there because the bishop can just go back here still protecting this square so it's not a foregone conclusion these positions are a little bit testy and he's pushed the kick put on so that his king's got a little flight square so should we bother going for the check anyway or should we just leave it there I think we'll just leave it there going to bring the knight across now attacking the bishop so it's now trying to utilize the advantage it's only one piece advantage but at least we've got well it's come down for the um, rook like we've mentioned okay so we'll go here it's probably worked something out because he moved dead quick then didn't he 
so it was good that we did the calculations covering quite a few aspects because we weren't shocked by the bishop doing this particular move so we could bring the rook up and support the bishop so that fell in line with part of our calculation so it is nice being able to do it i don't go overboard with it like one to four uh, like i've mentioned before one to four moves ahead because things change like that and you'll probably forget the, the move order of your calculation if you go any further so this bishop can hide here blocking our pawn which would be a bit annoying really so we need to try and get our pieces active somehow I can't really see any major targets for us either which again is going to slow the process down which is probably going to eat into the time because it is a 60 minute 10 second game and it's a nice way to practice your calculation and position at this moment not too pleased with my position the position isn't strong you know he's got double pawns here but he has more pawns on this side so he's got a pawn majority on this side and um, we've got equal pawns on this side we do have an extra piece but our pieces at the minute are in defensive mode and we're not really properly targeting anything so we've got pawns here like this i mean it'd be ideal if our bishop was here putting like a two on one type situation on there so that potentially is something we could do by bringing the bishop here and getting it there he does have the pawn that can push down to block off any of that activity but he'd have to probably do that now now, like we said, he's come here now because now if our bishop moves to go and do our fancy move, bishop can take the pawn. So we're probably going to have to move the rook here to put pressure on, but then if we do that, we're blocking the bishop, which is protecting the pawn. So it's all very clever stuff. So we're going to have to find a different tack now. Unless, of course, we want to sacrifice this pawn because we believe this might be a little bit better because bishop and a knight for the rook at this stage we would have a rook against their bishop so if we did go here it's not forced to work he can just drop his pawn down before we do that if we went there his bishop takes the pawn we come we can't go there well we can go there but his bishop's there so his bishop's probably going to take our bishop then the rook takes the bishop so his pawn majority is a lot more on that side and we've got the extra piece but he's going to be strong with these pawns so I don't think I'm going to do that fancy move I think the knight is going to have to get into the game and I can't see how it can so if we come back again we don't have any real spaces our rook doesn't need to well the bishop needs to move first but if we did attack the bishop, he takes the pawn. Told you, it's not a very good position for us. So maybe we go for a little bit of a win over tempo then on the king after all that. So rook check, king goes to his safe haven here. Right, so they've gone to the safe haven. We can cause a bit of hassle by bringing the... Well, we can't because he's going to take our bishop. So he goes there, rooks up the top. Bishop can always come here. Hmm. Interesting situation. Go for the check because uh, no, maybe not. It's going to be the knight. In it. I'm going to have to bring the knight down. But the knight is doing nothing. Knight comes here. out to come back in back 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 okay back 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 there's nothing definite I think if I make a move of what we talked about with the bishop or the rook uh, we're going to definitely lose out positionally they're trying to put more strength for these poor majority that they've got on this side here so if we can try and circumvent that it's potentially looking at touching on the pawn you know just to make them a little bit more active but I'm less worried about that than giving them 
full on double pawn access coming down. So at least we're making a move. Making a move, come round, come round. Am I blocking myself there? No. And then come round, attack the bishop here. It's a long winded way, but when you don't have anything, there's no point over pressing it. Might as well under press and get rid of the, the issue. The issue is this bishop at the moment. And it's only small potatoes, but it's like this pawn is like, is it called the dam? This is the thing that's blocking the water from flooding through because they've got the pawn majority on this side. So if they find a way of opening that up, then we're going to struggle defending if our pieces are not in the right places. Interesting. So they've gone for a long think, so I'll, I'll pause it while they're thinking. Cracking, just as I pressed the pause, they played this pawn move here. So again, another waiting move. I did say I was coming down here, I don't really see any problems with that. I'm going to bring the knight down. Got to remember not to go to this square because I'll be blocking it and the bishop will take the pawn. <laughs> so here, if we if he does another thinking move, or if I click pause, maybe they'll make a move. Okay, so they've moved the bishop, so I think they're feeling the pressure of the knight potentially coming towards it, maybe, or maybe they just want to, I don't know. But now we can't go for this pawn. What, what can we do? We can still have that check on the king, but at this moment, I don't think that's wise. I think we need to be getting our king across, supporting both these pieces. Could still come with the knight move. Which one is better for me? Because I don't really want this rook having the power on the bishop and the knight. Could bring here. If the bishop takes, the rook is still on the line. I think we can stick with the plan still, even though the bishop has moved out of the way. In fact, we could change it slightly, couldn't we? Because if we came here... What's the knight got after that? Came to there. Came to there. It's attacking the rook, putting pressure on the rook. If we did do that, maybe the bishop comes back again, attacking the pawn. Then we can come here. Then the bishops are protected again. Uh, oh, what did we say? If we'd go here, though, he could potentially come here with his rook, pinning our rook and our rook doesn't have a defender so that might lose us a bit of tempo we'd have to keep guarding that now mm. could bring the bishop here attacking his um, bishop but that would cause me some problems because he would rook his rook would take the knight all these little tiny forts I need to get all of these forts out of my head now and maybe just stick with what we said let's just stick with what we said because I don't think the knight being in front of the rook is going to work for us. Could come this way to then go here. So that's another, and he's blocking off that type of. But the thing is, the pawn can take. But he, in reality, he he wants this pawn to take, so that he's opening up his um, little floodgates. <laughs> Do, 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 do. Could push here. Takes, takes, but then it's the floodgate situation. 
Now he comes here. What's the bishop realistically got? It's just got the pawn, but it's no threat on the king. So if we did come there, uh, and if we did do that, say, and he did take, then our rook would take, but then he'd take our bishop. Interesting. So it would have to be the pawn. Opening up the floodgates a little bit on these pawns here. Yeah. Could I wear that? This bishop would be on this pawn. So that might be okay. Okay, let's go with that. Mm -hmm. It felt like an okay manoeuvre. Got to be so careful though when you're doing your calculations. You can get carried away. I know I can get carried away, and then I forget the basic piece that isn't defended. And he's going for a two-on-one, isn't he? Really, is he? Oh, is he looking for his rook to come here for a basic rook and king tack type thing? Don't tell me he's doing that. So there's, there is a point in probably coming here because we're going to be targeting this pawn. So if we did do that, and it's also blocking the bishop's attack on the pawn here. But if the bishop takes, let's look at the tempo. If the bishop takes, the pawn takes. He has to move this pawn or else it gets taken. I think we'll still carry on with that move. Um, I think that we're looking for this situation. So nothing like an active knight. And as you know, I'm a knight man. And I'm working quite nicely with the bishops now as well. So uh, the equal i can use them equally i understand the benefits of both now but this knight has been very busy in terms of coming back to help defend to then go back forward again to attack because our other pieces don't really have any benefits actually moving from where they're at they're okay where they're at, at the minute But at least our opponent is attempting to try and find spaces to attack and gain advantage. But we're, we're working on the disadvantages of us opening up the floodgates because they've got the poor majority. He has got he, he was going for it. <laughs> oh dear. So, I mean, if we took the pawn here, then he comes down with the, um, the rook. Uh, so we could actually just lean on to the rook here. Where does it go? It's almost kind of trapped, isn't it? Another piece that potentially is getting trapped. I moved there a bit quick. I should have talked it through, but it looks... Is it, it's not going to go... Oh, it can go here. It can go there. Yeah, missed that. But if it goes there... Oh, almost. I thought I had like a fork, but it's too far down. So when he drops here, we could bring our bishop here, blocking off any access whatsoever. Or, we could just bring our king up and attack the rook. So then he would have to sacrifice himself. I have a capturing a pawn here. So that makes sense. So if he drops here, because there's nowhere else for him to go, Unless of course he's just going to take the knight, but it's to our benefit if that happens. And then we just move the king, he's trapped. So that's a good thing for us. I always say though, 
my calculations can go wrong but I just physically can't see that he's escaping with his rook oh he is damn oh, so he can go here <laughs> and we have a dark square bishop I don't think he can escape this time surely because if he goes there or he goes there the pawn is taken wow suffocating the rook but we were very careful I just didn't do a full calculation of where he could escape I was like basically saying I've got him but each time he had a little bit of a gap and I think that's probably taking my calculation a little bit step further so that's what I need to really develop so now he definitely is trapped because he can't come there like we said that was the only space that he could go pawn is covering this square and our pawn is covering that square so he's either going to have to sacrifice himself or get taken by the bishop or something Whew. it's not over till it's over though and the bishop's protecting so he does lose the big gun he's only got the bishop now knight could go and put a check on the king but that's getting all fancy just take the rook off the board he's now on our pawn though we've just given up a pawn oh, why didn't I think that through so knight can come and put a check he can come and attack the knight or come here he's probably going to attack the knight I'm trying to save my pawn somehow but I don't think I can oh I can I can just bring the knight back around so defense work okay just trying to um, avoid the flood the flood of the pawn advantage so potentially attacking the bishop bishop comes out comes back again so yeah it's it's um it's not over by any means it's he's still got potential for getting his king involved getting my knight off the board doing some fancy bishop moves to actually even get a draw you know so I need to be boxing clever coming up here he's going to drop that so that then his bishop can actually protect it so does he drop that first yeah he's moved there first he knows that I'm going to be coming to attack this pawn can he protect them all so if I came here with the knight attacking this pawn if he drops that we can take this pawn so I think that's practical I have to forget about their king it's all home alone on the other side if we can get some advantage get reduced down this um, water supply that they've got here that's waiting to bust the dam which is the pawn majority obviously we're just trying to reduce that down there isn't anything that can protect it so ah, he's coming for the pawn again but uh, you see if we take it takes and I can't take this pawn because his bishop is protecting it and if I jump backwards and forwards then it's like the drawn position that we're talking about I'm going to have to take that chance aren't I I'm going to take the pawn now maybe it's not as bad as we're thinking now at least we've got it down to an equal but then he's going to get the victory here and the rook can get into some sort of action if it comes up his bishop's there he doesn't want this pawn taking so he's, he may have lost tempo I don't know my knight can't come back and protect that pawn can it I can attack this pawn though try and reduce it down a bit more it's causing me a headache now <clears throat> so he does take so we could take the pawn here rooks nicely on the dark white square so that's okay we're also attacking the bishop as well so if they forget themselves 
two pawns are on white squares now he's got split pawns so the the flood that we were so focused on preventing it breaking the dam it seems to have worked out for us and now he's looking to just get this pawn linked up with his bishop okay so we probably don't need to overthink the situation I'm going to put a check here and then take this pawn off I suppose he's going to drop that to his bishop doesn't uh, what was I doing which is the best one to take yeah I'll just go here we'll have a 2 on 1 if he drops the pawn Whew. been a good educational one for myself again nice steady way a good long match good long match really good I'm really pleased the players played on as well this is like a, a real chess match so we're gonna take does take thought he might have hung on a little bit there but looks like we might be getting a resignation shortly now we've got two linked pawns this pawn hasn't got anything to support it the rook will be taking that off good game yes so they've resigned good game indeed I'm really pleased with that okay nice one